Hey there, comic book community. My name is Joe, and you're watching 360 Comics. A couple of weeks ago, I purchased a collection over Instagram, and the package has arrived. Today, we're going to unbox it, show you what I got, talk about how much I spent on it, and what I think it's worth. Also, we got to make sure everything is in good condition because this box looks like it took some damage in the mail. Stay tuned to see. As of the time of filming this video, we are exactly 35 subscribers away from our goal of 2,000, at which point we'll be giving away this copy of Secret Wars number one. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below. Then you can check out our other videos from May until the present day, like those videos, and leave a comment on them for additional entries. Good luck. So this collection came to me from Instagram user TreeMcGee814, aka Chris. And Chris and I have done business before. I bought some stuff from him. He's bought some stuff from me. So we have a good working relationship. He reached out to me and told me that he had some stuff he was looking to get rid of and liquidate into cash so that he could use that money in order to buy a pre-code horror golden age book. And that got me really excited. I definitely wanted to help him out because I love that kind of stuff. And uh, he sent me some videos and pictures and had some pretty great books so we negotiated a price and he asked for the money up front normally i would not do that uh, when someone approaches me to buy a collection you know the the standard is you pay for it when you receive it um that being the case uh like i said i've done this business with chris before and i've had a positive experience so i decided you know i'm gonna help this guy out let's get it going and uh you know i'll pay right now and i'll wait for the books and uh you know fortunately they uh they did looks like they came in in good shape nothing looked messed up despite the uh, the box or anything like that so a plus packing there chris uh you can check him out on instagram like i said and he also has a youtube channel uh a supreme love Check that out. He talks about comic books and uh, vinyl collecting, which is uh, something else that I've, I've dabbled with over the years. Anyway, let's get into it. First book right here, we've got Spider-Gwen number zero. This uh, was kind of a prequel to her own uh, solo run, and this just reprints the story that happens in Edge of Spider-Verse number two, the first appearance of uh, Spider-Gwen or Gwen Stacy as Spider-Woman or ghost spider whatever you want to call her um but anyway uh real cool book you know obviously has a very similar cover as well to that that uh edge of spider verse book uh then we've got spider gwen number one her first solo book love this cover this is a book that i'd really like to get in a 9.8 someday um just a really beautiful cover um, and then there was a second printing of it. This is a little bit more rare. In fact, uh, according to Key Collector, it has a print run of less than 25,000. So uh, a pretty, pretty low print run. A little bit more expensive even than the first printing, which is something that I've talked about recently on this channel. Um, there was also Spider-Gwen number two, the second printing. You can tell by that, that blue cover, blue font, everything like that. Um, and then there was uh, number three. There was number three, but the variant cover. And all of these books, even ones that aren't key, number four, um, have some value. Number four variant cover. Because Spider-Gwen is just so popular. And this is her first run, so a lot of people do collect it. Um, and number five, cover A. So nice little part of that run with some variant covers, some second printings. Awesome. Uh, there's also the Spider-Gwen variant of Amazing Spider-Man number 80. Really great cover. Again, a lot of these are just superb covers. Uh, this is uh, one of two variant covers of uh, Spider-Gwen 25, which I believe is the either the second appearance or first full appearance of Gwenum. Uh, you know, Gwen... Uh, infected with the venom symbiote uh great cover here and this one of course an homage cover to asm number 300 uh for spider gwen 25 that same book um that was it for the spider gwen stuff except there will be one at the end the only slab that i got from chris was uh spider gwen related so we'll get to that in just a minute but first let's finish off the raw books we've got adventure into fear number 17 part of the man thing part of the run and uh this is the first appearance of a character named wondar who's on the front 
And uh, he's a, you know, super humanoid alien kind of guy. You can see him uh, throwing Man-Thing on the cover. Uh, pretty impressive. And then we've got uh, Uncanny Excellent. A couple of books from the uh, Uncanny run. And this is number 136, part of the Dark Phoenix saga. Definitely an iconic John Byrne cover that has been homaged time and time again, including on uh, the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths book with uh, the death of Supergirl with Superman holding her on the front. Um, and then we got Uncanny X-Men number 171. This is the issue where Rogue joins the X-Men. Definitely very monumental part of this run, um, you know, especially because this character has been really prominent ever since the 90s being on the television show. Tel television show? I said that very weird. Television show. Um, and being in the Fox X-Men movies of the early 2000s. I cannot wait for her to show up in the MCU, which I think is uh, inevitable. Might take a little while, but definitely will happen. Uh, X-Men number 283 is next. Again, a character I'm waiting on, Bishop, his first full appearance in this book. Great one. You've, if you've watched the channel for a while, you've probably watched me buy 20 plus copies of this book. Um, and I, I probably still have most or all of them because it is not one that I am very likely to sell. Uh, this next one, I don't believe this is a key. This is Moon Knight Special Edition number one. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, this was a mini series, maybe of reprints uh, that came out after the Fist of Khonshu run, but before the Mark Spector Moon Knight run. Um, so like, yeah, late 80s, early 90s, probably early 90s. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Moon Knight. Great character, uh, cool book. Don't think it's a key, but cool nonetheless. Um, next, we got some ASM. Two books from the uh, Craven's Last Hunt run, number 293. Great cover. I think it's a Mike Zach cover. I think he did all the covers for that run. I uh, don't see a name anywhere, but I think so. And then number 294 as well, which I believe this is the issue where uh, Craven the Hunter takes his own life. And uh, that is, you know, obviously a very key point in the Amazing Spider-Man run. Uh, up next, we got MCU related second appearance. Can't go wrong with that. Masters. Uh, sorry, this is actually Marvel Special Edition number 16. Which, uh, you know, issue number 15 was the first appearance of Shang-Chi, second appearance in this very next issue, number 16. And then by number 17, the character, I guess, had caught on so much that they dropped Marvel Special Edition out of the name and just changed it to Master of Kung Fu, Shang-Chi's very own run. Uh, this next one, also a second appearance of a character who is debuting very soon in the MCU, the Savage She-Hulk, number two, early 1980s. And this book looks really sharp from the time period that it came out in. Happy to have this, especially with the show debuting, what, in, in the next next month or so. Um, then we've got Spider-Man Unlimited, number one. Um, a book that I've owned dozens and dozens of. I own a 9.8 uh, I own a double cover, but this one is a little bit different. I've never owned one of these before. It's a newsstand from this part of the 90s. These were definitely a little bit more rare. Um, so, yeah, happy to have that. Not sure if I'm going to keep this one or if this is something that I'm going to sell off. But uh, either way, it's uh, you know definitely a little bit uh, you know more of a, a rare book compared to the regular printing of this one. Uh, these next couple are some of the heavy hitters from this collection. We've got Wolverine number 8 absolutely classic Buscema cover all blue background Wolverine and the Joe Fixit persona of Hulk on the front just absolutely you know iconic classic oh whatever word you want to use to describe this cover in fact it's not a key issue there's nothing really key about it other than the cover and nonetheless it is still one of the most expensive books of the run and honestly I think it might be the second most expensive after issue number one um, which is, is saying a lot. So, um, yeah, really great cover. This might be sharper than the copy in my personal collection. So this might actually replace that. I got to see um, when I get some time to go through that. And then we've got Marvel Team-Up number 141. This ties for the first appearance, uh, sorry, the ties for the second appearance of the black suit. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 252 came out, and then I, I believe just a few weeks later was uh, Marvel Team-Up number 141. 
the same time that Spectacular Spider-Man number 90 came out. So those are the first three appearances. A lot of people associate Secret Wars 8 as being one of those first appearances. It is not. It is an origin story of those uh, of the black suit that came out a few months later during the Secret Wars run. Just so you know, little fact there. Um, nonetheless, great book. Features Daredevil, one of my favorites. Happy about that. Um, and then, ooh, this one, another Spidey-related book. We've got Miles in his second ever appearance Ultimate Fallout 4, obviously an extremely expensive book at this point, especially high grade of the first print. This, definitely a little bit more affordable, but still up there. This is Ultimate Comics, all new Spider-Man, number one, the second appearance of Miles Morales, the first solo Miles Morales book, and uh, just an absolute classic cover. Can't go wrong with this. Definitely happy to have it. Um, now, this next group of stuff... There actually was a book that was damaged during the packaging process. And Chris messaged me and he let me know about the damage that happened and said, you know what, instead of, you know, renegotiating, can I just throw a bunch of books in for free? I said, that's fine. Not only did he throw a bunch of books in for free, but he included the damage book as well, which we'll get to in just a second. But yeah, he wrote me this little note right here and stuck it to the front of a Watchmen number one, an absolute classic by Alan Moore. Really a pinnacle book of the 1980s and uh, definitely something that I'm very happy to have. Uh, again, not sure if I'm going to keep this one or not because I do have one on my PC. We'll see which one is in better condition and then uh, we'll, we'll put one up for sale when, uh, when I make that determination. But definitely thanks uh, for you know making up for that, that, that uh, book getting damaged. And this is actually the book that got damaged. And uh, where is it? Uh... Oh, right, dead center. Look at that. Little tape pull right there. Nothing terrible. So it was really good of Chris to not only, you know, let me know that that happened, but also make up for it in a really good way. And there's, you know, some other books you'll see thrown in here. By the way, this is Captain Marvel number 18. This is where Carol Danvers gets her powers, which obviously very significant, pertains to the MCU, all of that stuff. And this next one also pertains to stuff going on in, uh, you know, some live action series. This time over at DC, we've got The Peacemaker number four. Great cover. In fact, this is my favorite cover from this Peacemaker run. Um, you know, he first appeared in Charlton Comics uh, Fighting Five number 40 and then also got his own run during that Silver Age time. Uh, and this was it. And this is, uh, like I said, issue number four, not not the first issue or anything like that, but still everything in that run is collectible, especially while this character is growing in popularity due to the amazing portrayal by John Cena. Ten years ago, who would have thought like John Cena would be like a top comic book movie slash show actor? I certainly would not have guessed that, but whatever. I'm stoked on it. Um, great book right here. Definitely uh, something that I see being worthwhile for a long time because uh, John Cena hopefully will be continuing to play that role uh, even after the merger. Then we've got an adaptation of 1989's Batman movie. Um, you know, comic book adaptation of the movie, you can see the characters are drawn to look like the actors that portrayed those characters. Great stuff right there. And we got Warlock number 10, and this is a nice book right here. This is an origin story. Oh, huh. Wait one second. An origin story here of uh, Thanos? I think it's a Thanos origin story. There might be some other significant things about this book too, but look on the back. Uh, we got... Tales, of, sorry, Strange Tales number 181. This is the second appearance of Gamora, and I think it's like the origin of Pip the Troll, something like that, or his like third appearance or something like that. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, these two books were in the same mylar. I almost missed that one, but I uh, caught it there before it went behind. Definitely happy about that. And uh, this is another pile of books that he said, hey, more freebies, take them. Uh, you know, for being understanding about that tape pull. Chris, you were very generous about uh, what you gave me for that tape pull. So thank you for that. This is a great one. I uh, love this book. I picked it up a couple times recently. We've got um, Silk number two, the Phantom variant cover. And uh, this is an homage, obviously, to Todd McFarlane and Spider-Man number 300, more like 301, but, you know, 300 was the book that that started that uh, iconic pose and everything. Um, this is just 
I think a random Daredevil book. Daredevil number 306. I don't believe this to be a key, but I might be wrong about that. I forget. Ugh. Yeah, I don't remember. It's not part of either the Miller runs, and that's mainly where Daredevil stuff is focused. But great book. Nonetheless, it's it's Daredevil. It's from the 90s. Um, this is Solo Avengers number 18. I, I'm not aware if this is a key. These might have just been some, some extra throw-ins or something like that. This might be, though. Huh. I'm going to have to look this one up. If you know what this is, leave it in the comments below. Educate the community. It would be appreciated. Then we got Fantastic Four 272, first cameo appearance of Nathaniel Richards, who is the father of Reed Richards, who is coming to the MCU officially soon, soon by in the next, like, two years. But nonetheless... I'm really hoping for big things for, for this character. Uh, he does have, you know, a, a Kang connection being uh, Kang's name is, is Nathaniel Richards. So I, we'll, we'll find out if this ends up getting tied into that storyline as well. Uh, I know nothing about this next book. Marvel comics presents number 94 Superman harbinger, lady quark and pariah. I am not aware of anything about this book. I don't think I've ever seen it before. If you know something, if it's a key, if it's got some significance, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and, uh, oh, this next one is great because this was a gift. This was something that he threw and he said, I know you like Daredevil, so I hope you appreciate this last free gift. And this is awesome because I do not own this. This is Daredevil Redemption, one of the miniseries from the Marvel Knights run. And, uh, yeah, really happy to have that. Thank you, Chris. Issue one through six, the full run. Uh, I have most of the other you know, Daredevil miniseries, you know, Daredevil Electra, Daredevil Ninja, all that stuff, but I don't have this one definitely staying with me in the personal collection. So thank you for that. Putting that aside here so I don't get it mixed up with the other stuff. Uh, the very last thing there is to show you before we talk about price I paid and, and uh, you know, kind of what it's worth is this right here, the one single slab, da da da, Edge of Spider-Verse number two. The first appearance of Spider-Gwen. And this is the fourth printing of the book. I believe there were five. I think there were five total printings. There's a green one, orange one, blue one, white one, and purple one. So yeah, five. I think that that's correct. Um, this fourth printing, honestly, I would prefer to have the first one because that's the most expensive one. But as far as like how they look and stuff, purple... I've said it before, my favorite color, definitely my favorite cover, color for comic book covers. So this one is one that I'm really happy to have. And I haven't decided if this is going to stay with me in my personal collection because it is a 9.8 or if it's something that I'm going to move to try to upgrade to a first printing of the book. We'll have to see what, uh, you know, what, what, uh, which path I choose to go down. Anyway, um, you know what it is. First appearance of Gwen Stacy as Spider-Woman slash spider gwen slash ghost spider whatever you want to call her um great book fourth printing 9.8 really high grade um and you know let's talk about the the value of all this stuff and, and kind of what i paid um we came to a, a price of 450 dollars for everything you just saw um i felt like that was um you know a, a nice chunk of what it's worth um at the same time as leaving me enough room on some of this stuff, um, you know, to be able to move it for a profit, uh, if I decide to do so. Um, that being said, this book alone kind of sells between 200 and 250 dollars in a 9.8. So that's about, you know, let's let's average that out to 125. Uh, sorry, two 225. That would be half of the value of everything. So, um, you know, certainly the rest of the stuff is more than 200 dollars worth of stuff in fact i, I think it's it's, it's a, quite a bit more uh i should be able to on the high side double up on this um you know if i really sell everything for market value and if i maybe wait on some of the characters who are coming to the mcu or have a, a property being released soon might be a good idea to do that so i can get a little bit more value out of the books once they become more desirable um i'm gonna have to kind of see how this pans out i was really happy though 
to be able to help Chris get a book that he really wanted and to grab some stuff, uh, like I said, some upgrades to the personal collection. Maybe the slab stays there as well. We'll have to find out. But certainly, you know, I paid four fifty. It's probably worth in total between eight hundred and a thousand dollars. Um, so I'm I'm gonna be able to you know come out on top from this with a little bit of work. Um, I'm not, you know, tripling my money like I often do, but that's okay. I helped someone else out in the community get a good book that they like, and I upgraded my personal collection. I, I can't complain about that, especially if I can, you know, make a couple bucks off it as well. So, uh, yeah, I hope you like this video. Definitely um, was uh, a good experience with Chris. So if you're ever dealing with him buying, selling books, stand up guy, follow him on uh you, what's it called? Uh, subscribe to his YouTube, follow him on, um, Instagram as well. And, uh, yeah, if you're around this weekend around the Philadelphia area, another reminder, we are having Ambler comic con in Ambler, Pennsylvania on Saturday tomorrow. If you're watching this video, the day it was released, uh, that is August 13th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Ambler, my hometown. I grew up there as a kid. I spent so many hours there uh, skateboarding up and down the street and stuff like that, going to the movie theater, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you're around that local area, local you know Philadelphia area, please come by. Say hi. I'm going to have stuff for sale. I'm going to have uh, a discount available for, uh, for certain things, and I'm going to be doing a giveaway as well. So come by. If you're not local, check out it out check us out on instagram because uh we are going to be going live during the event and uh doing some stuff there as well might do might do a giveaway on instagram we'll see i'll find out anyway i uh, hope you enjoyed this video thumbs up for a like leave a comment down below let me know how you think i did and uh until next time turn the page wash your hands